The first United Nations Earth Summit held in 1992 saw 100 heads of state come together to tackle the problems of environmental degradation. These leaders pledged to hold a UN General Assembly review every five years to see how well countries had responded to these environmental challenges. Governments understood that sustainable development for future generations would require worldwide action. A dialogue not just between legislators, but NGOs, environmentalist groups and mining sectors. Two decades on, in the month of June, the same governments and NGOs returned to Brazil for the Rio Plus 20 United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development, where they will assess the results of past summit outcomes and revive political commitment to setting an agenda for the next 20 years. In preparation for Australian delegates taking to the international stage, ALSE hopes to bolster the Australian story and look to local initiatives tracking a more sustainable path. Through ALSE's online forum, users from all around the country have asked questions they believe are key to our environmental agenda. Votes by around 900 users helped define the Australian public's key concerns. Users wanted to tackle the big issues. The divide between sustainable development and economic growth, the gaps between local communities and politicians on the national carbon price, other questions asked were if anti-meat consumption should be implemented and how seniors will transition to sustainable living. The top five ALSE question askers took their questions directly to Councillor Cathy Oak at a Q&A forum at Melbourne Town Hall. Shelley Meager from Do It On The Roof asked the first question. How can we get public green roofs happening in Melbourne right away? Of course I love green roofs for many, many different reasons um, for their environmental um, benefits is one of the clear obvious reasons and cooling our buildings and, and the City of Melbourne has been involved in a lot of research um, and with, not only with our universities but also with building owners to determine the best sort of green roofs for Melbourne. The second question came from Jeff Payne on the issue of whether we should stop fluoridation and that there is overwhelming evidence for the support of fluoridation of water. I talk about it at great length over, over many years about the, but the overwhelming consensus that I can see within the, the, the scientific research is that it is one of the best socially equitable um, health responses we can do in terms of tooth decay and cavity prevention and, and that is the reason why Victoria, Australia does it in um, most of our water supplies. Kevin Reaney asked the third question. What can we Melburnians do before the Earth Summit to ensure that real actions follow, not just agreements to more talking like those made at Cancun? I guess frustrating aspects from my point of view as an individual that's not necessarily you know, important, but um, was how unengaged people were with the process and, and how little care people had in Melbourne or probably around the world that people had in what's going on at the UN conferences and, and Rio's no um, no different in that, you know, obviously I'm involved and the city's involved and you're all now aware of, you know, Rio Plus 20 and the Earth Summit, but how aware are, um, are people in Melbourne about what's going on and what the conversation's all about. Rob Turk wanted to ask hypothetically if the 1992 Earth Summit didn't occur, what would be different in Melbourne today? It is a hypothetical. <laughs> it's difficult. It's, a, I, it's difficult to answer, obviously. But I, I'd like to think that if we didn't have the Earth Summit, that that people were progressive enough to to think that we need to act on environmental change and climate change. And you know, climate change was something. It didn't just appear on the agenda in 1992 at the Earth Summit. It was something that you know people were aware of well before that. The final question asker, Glenn Dalton, wanted to develop 10 criteria to measure sustainability across each local government. I totally agree and again what we're, the reason, part of the eco-city mapping journey or process that we're going on is how can we take the sustainability data that we do collect and we are collecting a lot of data around energy use and water use and, and, and where the carbon um, impacts are, or how can we use it by suburbs even like North Melbourne, Kensington, um, Carlton, how can we show the people in Carlton what their footprint is compared to people in, um, in the city or in, in other suburbs. Our Say users helped make this day a success. 
the thing that I got out of today's conversation was um, everyone wanted to educate about sustainability um, and they, they wanted to create spaces where they create, um, could educate about sustainability. This discussion helped raise just some of Melbourne's concerns for the Rio Plus 20 Summit. I think it definitely showed people's interest in knowing more and being engaged in the process, which is great, which is, I guess, my hope for this whole um, project was to better engage people in Melbourne about Rio and about our role in Rio and their role in, in any actions that may or may not be taken. So it's been a great process and the questions um, around um, what the city should be doing or shouldn't be doing I think came out in some of those questions and, and the conversations yeah, have been great.